One of the first stories that really touched me was uh, one of the first clients that probably walked through a parenting program. And uh, one of the things I thought would be neat to do for guys uh, is give them a certificate to kind of say, you know, hey, you did something. And this and with this young man, when I handed him the certificate, he got teary-eyed. And uh, I might get teary-eyed. It really meant something to him. And uh, what that told me is that some of the guys that we're seeing here, their, their life hasn't felt so accomplished. And yet he felt like he had just done something, and especially for his family. Hey, and welcome to Zero Compromise, helping you stand for truth in a world that falls for lies. I'm Patricia Engler here at the Hope Rising Pregnancy Center, joined by Jessica D. Ford, aka JJ. Hello. And Rocket Rob Webb. Hey, guys. And we have a cool conversation. This is the first time we filmed out on the road somewhere. So where are we and what's going on, JJ? Yeah, we're at Hope Rising Women's Pregnancy Center, and I'm very excited about this topic because I'm actually pregnant. We haven't talked about it on the podcast yet. Congratulations. But yes. So we are here with Jim Altensee. He is the men's programs coordinator for the center here. So we're really looking forward to the conversation. Yep. Make sure you guys stay tuned for this whole conversation. It's going to be an amazing one. We're going to be talking with Jim here. Make sure you also like, subscribe, and share this video so we can get this message out to as many people as possible. So with that, Jim, thank you so much for coming on to the show with us. We appreciate well, it. I'm delighted to be here. This is really a, it's, it's really a joy. So, yeah. So let, let's go ahead and start off with um, uh, tell the audience a little bit about who you are and what you guys do here at the ministry. Well, we are. It's Hope Rising A Pregnancy Center. So really, uh, the central to us is, uh, is that pregnant moment. Uh, so when a young lady comes comes and hopefully brings the guy with her. We see a lot of folks that it's, it's the partner as opposed to the spouse kind of thing, but we're here to serve them and we can do it in a lot of ways. Of course, the immediate thing is with their pregnancy, pregnancy tests, ultrasounds, um, that kind of thing, uh, but resources beyond that to include parenting and practical resources they need for their child. Uh, everything from diapers and wipes to car seats and all that kind of stuff. And parenting classes have a system where basically they earn points uh, for, for doing lessons. Uh, in other words, they grow in their knowledge and as they do that, they grow in resources uh, with the potential to uh, use those points to buy things. That's fantastic and invaluable information too. Can you explain what you do? What's your role here at the center? Well, mine really is, uh, I'm, I'm so blessed. So I'm uh, I'm largely responsible for taking care of the guys that come here. And so uh, any and all guys that come here uh, in terms of meeting them initially, you know, we really try to welcome them and, and make them feel at home. Um, you know, this is, a, this is a center for the family, really, uh, even though it's focused on the, the pregnancy, you know, uh, but it's really for, the, for all of them. So we really wanted to feel very comfortable uh, and uh, welcome. I want to hear his story. And uh, so, uh, you know, bring him back as he's interested. We have a little, little sheet we use to kind of check his interest areas. Uh, you know, is he interested in classes? Does he just want information and knowledge about pregnancy? Is he concerned about other things in life? You know, people come in with a lot more than just pregnancy going on. Some of them have legal things they're going through. Uh, some of them don't have a doctor for the young lady. Some of them need counseling help. I mean, there's just a variety. So, uh, and we can point them to those resources uh, and uh, that we can't provide, uh, but we can sure provide a lot for them in that moment. And so it's really... And, and I'm so blessed to uh, not only myself, I'm not the lone guy. We have four locations. And so uh, we have uh, just a, in fact, the backbone of what we do, and, and I will say this for really probably all pregnancy centers or resource centers, is um, as the volunteers. I mean, they make, they really, you know, you got to have a core staff, um, but you, the volunteers are really the ones that really are the structure that uh, they really gives us an ability to meet a lot of clients and to care for the needs. So there's there's uh, 14 other guys right now. It kind of goes up and down a little bit just with the things of life. You know, some can serve for a time and then they have to move on to other things. But right now, those 14 guys, uh, and then myself makes 15 across the four locations that can uh, that can meet with guys as they come in. And uh, that initial meeting is pretty important because, um, you know, a lot of the, the guys that come in kind of uncertain as to, you know, why am I here? What's going on? What is, what you know, what's the possibilities? So really trying to hear their story and just let them know they're cared for. And and I should say too, that as we do these things, um, the, the really the core for where we're coming from is is the gospel. And so, you know, our, our heart is for them uh, to, to care for them. Them. Our heart is to hear them and to provide for needs that they may not even be really aware that they that they have at the moment. So I have the blessing of not only meeting with clients but also uh, guiding a men's team and kind of helping them do their what they do well. You know, they want it, and it's so exciting. They these guys come in here and they're older guys like me, uh, dads, granddads, a lot of them, not all of them, but most of them, um, and uh, they just really want to help families do well, and uh, and especially the guys to you know understand their role and to just uh, really serve. Uh, really, I, I think of a servant leader heart kind of thing, but to really serve well uh, these guys that come in. And so I have the privilege of kind of helping them prepare to do that and, uh, you know, giving advice along the way. And and uh, so, yeah, that's... Uh, Follow what Jesus does, right? That's, he, he is the godly role model that we should be uh, following. And 
So just real Amen. quick, two things before we get into your story. Um, number one, what, what I'm so excited about and, and what your guys' role is here is reaching out to fathers and reaching out to men because so many times in this ongoing debate regarding abortion, you know, we always focus so much on the mother and the woman and, and we should, right? It's mm-hmm. for good reason. But a lot of the times we forget about the fathers as well. There's actually a statistic I saw the other day of 80 something percent of women said that they would have kept their baby if the father was still around, if the father was willing to support and move forward. So I just wanted to say, appreciate everything you guys are doing out there, reaching out to men, reaching out to fathers. We need more of that. And second, that you guys are centered on the gospel ultimately, because that's really what we need, right? Something we say at our minister all the time, it's it's, it's not a knowledge issue, it's a heart issue, right? Amen. And that's ultimately what every single person needs is they need the heart, uh, that heart transformation through the power of the gospel. So appreciate you guys and everything you do. So it also sounds like you have a pretty amazing testimony on how you came to work here. So go ahead and start off with that. Well, I appreciate that thought. I, it it I does, may, may not feel amazing to me, but it's uh, it really is just God, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, trying to listen to his heart and what he wants you to do. I was in the Air Force, uh, both as an Air Force officer and so forth, and then a civilian. But I really sensed, uh, and I had really, um, family ministry has been important to me for probably heading towards 40 years now. And uh, and you and, and for the many, many years, it was really financially was the largest sense of support on that, uh, which I felt very blessed to be able to do and so forth. But, but God really started turning my heart probably in the 2000s. And I was a single dad for a long time. So I really gained an appreciation for, for the struggle that families can have, particularly single parents kind of a thing. Um, I can remember situations where just finding child care was just a really hard thing and just the availability of it. And so, but God always provides. And I can remember one particular time where he really came through uh, where there didn't seem like any options, but God does that. And so, um, but I gained a real appreciation for for families and it's just been on my heart for a long time. And then um, I started, uh, we have a Christmas program here called Adopt a Family. It's been around for a number of years. I think I became aware of, of it was, at the time it was called Miami Valley Women's Center. Now it's Hope Rising. But I became aware of a program that uh, where families can sponsor a family and buy Christmas gifts for them. So when they go through a program, they 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 don't have a Christmas potentially, but but we're blessed to find people who are willing to buy them gifts. And I got to be one of those people. And so I started doing that for a time. Then I became aware that they actually had a men's ministry. And I thought, a men's ministry? What's this all about? And uh, and so I became a volunteer back in 2015 and started you know gearing towards that, uh, the training for it and so forth. And um, and then. And God put it on my heart that I really I was I was actually in the, a civilian in the Air Force at that time uh, out on the base Wright Patterson and um, I, I just really sent the sense the need to uh, transition my life I really wanted my day as, as blessed as I was to do what I did I really wanted my day to be uh, really helping families and in the context of a Christ-centered ministry and so I started looking at a lot of options and I made plans to go ahead and retire from the Air Force in that case a second time as a civilian and uh, and I just trusted God to provide a way and and sure enough he did I I, I checked out a lot of different great ministries that are out there, very familiar names like Focus on the Family and so forth. But I was a volunteer here at the time, and I became aware of a part-time position opening here. And I checked the resources, you know, can I make this work? And by God's grace, I could. And so I took on this role. But it was really it was really uh, an incredible thing to be able to, and I've been doing this now uh, about seven and a half years, okay. of just making my full-time thing that I do on a part-time basis, but really to serve God's purposes and trying to lift up families and really help men, uh, especially to, to really rise up in that role and know how valued they are, <clears throat> how important they are to uh, to the family. Absolutely. And that's just so needed. So you mentioned um, having that heart for families. So I'm just curious, it's something that we talk about a lot at Answers in Genesis is the importance of family and the centrality of that within God's plan for humanity and for society and for his church. But um, what was on your heart? Why did God give you a heart for families? Why are they important? Oh, gosh. <clears throat> I guess um, I, I was really aligned with a lot of different ministries that, that supported families, and I was sensing a lot of uh, social issues and so forth that were coming against families, just seeming to make family hard. And, and my heart is, family shouldn't be hard. I mean, it, life is hard at times, but but there should be a lot of joy, especially when it comes to God's blessing in the family, you know, being lived out and lived through. But it was really just sensing the struggle that families are going through and just wanting to help with that, to help people have hope. I, I, I love uh, well, Romans 15. 15, 13, uh, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope is a big deal. Our society needs it in a large way. And uh, I, the guys I see here are testimony to the ho- need for hope across our culture. But I think for my little small part of the world, especially with the guys, to know that there is hope that they're important and that they can make a difference. So it was really just sensing the struggle and, and wanting to try to be a part in some small way of, of, uh, uh, of trying to help that. But I will tell you, I came into this, this, uh, this ministry, though, with, you know, you, 
that there's some growing that you have to do. One of the things that I that I was challenged with is like getting to know these guys. Um, I don't know if any of you are like that, but I can. I was always could be a question asker that could just result in yes or no answers. So how do I ask? How do I ask open ended questions? And so that was really something the Lord put on my heart because learning a guy's story, uh, hearing him, and can just continue the conversation is so important. And so God really has grown me in that. He's He's let that be a point of emphasis as I try to encourage our men's team to do the similar thing. So again, it's coming alongside them in their issues, in their struggles, and hearing their story and uh, offering them ideas and hope. And uh, and we do that in a gospel context, you know. And we and we're really respectful. We serve everybody uh, in terms of their their background, faith of none or, or faith of other things. Um, we're here to serve, and so um, we try to have respectful conversations. And and if they're really you know they're really strong and what their beliefs are, we we really work hard to respect that. And at the same time, let it be known that the love of Jesus is right here with us, you know, in the moment. And uh, so uh, we do we had to try to do this with a lot of grace. Praise God. It, it, we talk a lot on the podcast about going out in obedience to what God is calling you to do, especially for young adults. And it's wonderful. And praise God for how He did that in your life and to Amen. see Him. Yeah, to see him work through this center and in the position that you're in now. And as a pregnant lady, there when you first find out you're pregnant, you get so overwhelmed because you're inundated with so many questions, especially if you're a first time mom. And even from the father's perspective too, there's just so many things that you you're not sure, you don't know exactly how to handle situations. So praise God for centers like this that can give them valuable resources. But can you walk us through what occurs for the woman and for the man to when they come to a pregnancy center like this, when they don't know what to expect, maybe they're a little little scared. They're not sure where to start, what to do. So what do you guys do to provide those resources for them? And what does that look like? Well, thank you for that. And I I, uh, I will first say that so important is just to have a welcoming atmosphere to come into. You know, the, from the the room you enter into, is it is it is it a pink room? There's nothing wrong with pink, <laughs> but 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 you want to choose coloring that, that kind of speaks to both the, the male and the female. You want it to be welcoming and, and just the, the, the decor and so forth. And then, of course, the people who are, you know, at the desks and so forth, uh, you really want to exhibit the warmth and love of Christ. In, in that moment, so that's important to us. So that that initial impression is really important. And then and then uh, most of, most people uh, find us probably one or two ways. Uh, a lot of online for sure, but also a lot of word of mouth too. Uh, I'm, I'm always tickled in a sense. Uh, you know, you 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 want people to have uh, you don't want them to be in an urgent feeling moment. But when they have a family member who's been here before and they find out about it and they they come because of that family member, that's really a blessing. It kind of says that maybe we we did something right for the Lord and and uh, they've come back. Uh, somebody else has come along. So. But but walking through the door, um, greeted, of course, um, we're ready for the person to come. Typically, the young lady will go back, we'll invite her back to, for the pregnancy test. And if she's far enough along, you know, you need to be about six weeks, you know, a good solid six weeks, not not five weeks in a day, but about six weeks in a few days or beyond to have a good ultrasound. And uh, and it's a limited ultrasound in the sense that we can, you know, check the viability of pregnancy, make sure it's in the right kind of place and stuff. We can do some measurements and just check things out. The actual health of the child, that's really up for a doctor on site to do where everything we do medically is covered uh, under a doctor's authority. Uh, we're doing all that in a very appropriately and so forth. We have a great staff of nurses and so forth to do the ultrasounds. But uh, she'll go back and then we'll offer the guy typically a little kind of a little information sheet to say, you know, we have a lot we can do for guys. Do you see anything of interest to you? And so he, he'll he take a look at that, uh, ask him just to turn it in when he's done or we'll come out and just, you know, uh, say, hey, can we help you with that? And, and invite him back for a conversation. And in that moment then, just to kind of hear his heart, hear his story uh, and let him know the resources available to him. And they're doing very similar things with the young lady in terms of, you know, surrounding her, finding out her story, and and just answering any questions she may have, uh, making sure she does understand, you know, the implications of where she is in the pregnancy and what's ahead. And then, of course, parenting classes comes up as a part of that conversation. And we typically do those one-on-one. So the uh, young lady would meet with an uh, older, uh, you know, wise woman who's been there, and, and, and uh, the young man would meet with an old guy like me, and we would do uh, similar things on that side and just, you know, talk to their interest uh, in, in their particular role within the family. That's awesome. Yeah, I have to tell you, when I walked in here, too, I was the... Mm-hmm. I was telling Rob and Patricia that it smells so good in it here. Smells good. <laughs> really, like, it smells so good, oh, and yeah, you great. you are hit with the with a, just a warmth too, like, the decor and everything. So yeah, you guys are doing fantastic things here with uh, that. Glory to God! I, and I'll tell you, it's some, some really excellent ladies who orchestrated that. If if I had done it, it would have it like <laughs> it would look like a cave or something. I don't know, but uh, but they did a great job. Ladies definitely have that skill. Oh, I'm just saying. Oh yeah, um, that's something my my wife's always good. And and like you were saying, like that first impression is so important it when is. they first walk through the door. Do you have any interesting stories or experiences lately that you could share with us? 
Oh, even as far as like with client kind of yeah, situations? With stuff? Well, I, I want to say a big picture first. I was kind of thinking about, um, you know, what I might say along those lines. And I was going back over uh, just kind of little little small prayer notes that I've made over the course of you know, some years. And I was really amazed. And it's, it's the same story for really uh, just about anything you may do for the Lord in terms of the work you do, uh, whether it's in ministry or, or, or not in a ministry environment. But there's a lot of life that goes on. And what I what I was really tickled to see is that there's client situations, you know, it'll be just a generic note that says clients that come in abortion minded and they're very strong in this, you know, um, or we're praying for their hearts, you know, like crazy. Uh, or other ones where a client's in a situation where they've got a very difficult family situation and there's a lot of brokenness. And, uh, you know, you remember and you pray for that. And and also the people that I'm so blessed to serve with, whether it's the guys or the ladies on this wonderful team, uh, just praying for them. So there's a big picture of just a lot of a lot of heart and prayer and living life and encouraging each other and uh, walking through this life together over the course of years. So there's a big picture of that, but there are definitely uh, some kind of neat little stories uh, along the way. I remember one of the first stories that really touched me, this was very early on, uh, was uh, one of the first clients that probably walked through a parenting program. And uh, he did the, the full 10 weeks as a new dad. It's one hour a week, you know. So by the way, that's typically what what uh, what someone can expect in classes. About an hour a week, we try to work around your schedule very much and, uh, and learn, you know, and learn with you too, because we're learning your story from your application point as well. And so um, one of the early ones, that you know, I walked a young man through his whole program. And uh, one of the things I thought would be neat to do for guys uh, is give him a certificate to kind of say, you know, hey, you did something. And this and with this young man, when I hand him a certificate, he got teary-eyed. And uh, I might get teary-eyed. It's all good. But it really meant something to him. And uh, what that told me is that some of the guys that we're seeing here, their, their life hasn't felt so accomplished. And yet he felt like he had just done something, and especially for his family. And uh, that was that was powerful. And that, that was a marker in, in my time. And there's been other ones too. There was another client who was, uh, uh, he was so excited, but he was so nervous. I mean, he was just like, tell me everything. Tell me everything and tell me it again. And uh, it was really, it was really sweet. Uh, but and when he was done, uh, we asked for their feedback. And he, he said, this is the Swiss army knife of preparation, <laughs> you know, to be a dad. And I thought that was so, t- that really tickled me. Uh, I was like, yeah, Swiss army knife. I kind of like being that. That's good. What was really neat though, is he, he had his child. And then uh, three years later, he called up out of nowhere and said, he's now a toddler. I could really, I'd really like to come back and do some more classes about this stage in his life. So I do this well. And so that was such an incredible blessing to see a guy, you know, wanting to lean into that part of the story too. And there's so many more. Um, Gosh, just the other day, a guy came in, he'd made a profession of faith here, which is really neat. By the way, we have a bell uh, at all four of our locations. So when somebody makes a declaration of Jesus as their Lord and Savior, we ring the bell Uh and everybody, you know, the staff comes out We we just praise God in the moment. We know heaven's celebrating, and, and we do too yeah. a little bit. So really, really sweet. But he had done that, and he was coming back, actually, another one of our services. And there's so many I could have gone over, but we have something called client services. Every three months, uh, somebody can walk in off the street, basically. They don't need to be in a program or whatever, and just simply say, you know, I'm Tony. And, you know, I've got two kids, and, and we really could use some, you know, they're, they're a year old and two and a half. Could use some diapers, wipes, formula, and clothing. And guess what? They walk out with that. And so uh, now we're not we're not the Walmart where they walk up and just, you know, plop down their re- request, and they're on their way. We get to know them, what they've got to do fill out a little bit of paperwork and uh, we get to know their story a little bit and we'll look for a moment too to also have a spiritual conversation uh, you know an element of the gospel being shared even in that light moment and I should have said a little bit ago when I talked about you know doing programs especially with clients like that one that I mentioned who got a certificate um, the gospel will be shared for sure at some point in that program and we try to really do that by the, the, the leading of the Lord on that by the Holy Spirit and so that's that's central when do you do that and how do you do it but um, this person when he came back just was checking up life with him and I said well how's it going with your new faith and that kind of stuff. And there came a point in the conversation where I mentioned about praying for his boys. And he said, I, I, I don't know how to do that. And I said, you don't know how to, how I, tell me about why about that. And it was really interesting because he basically had a real insecurity. And I can relate to this as a dad who's trying to lead my kids, you know, in the faith. But he just was real insecure about praying for his kids about that he didn't really know the right words, which was a wonderful moment because I told him, the Lord just wants to hear your heart. There are no perfect words that you're supposed to, you know, it's not how loud you say thee or thou or anything else. It's really just praying from your heart out of the love you have for your children and what their needs are. And it was really neat. It was like a little light bulb uh, went off for him. And I pray that he felt some confidence that he can actually do this. And uh, that was
was that was a very sweet recent moment on that. And there's so many more in between. You know, you get and even the hard ones uh, touching in a special way. The guy that is just so determined. You know, the abortion is it. This is just this is just what it is. And uh, you know, you try to you know, talk to him, listen to him, ask him a little bit more about why. And uh, but he still leaves really hard. Those are hard too. But those give you things to pray about. You know, and occasionally those stories come around. Uh, we'll hear for, through his partner that they ended up choosing life. And uh, and you just give God praise because you you hope that you know maybe you know a little seed was planted here that helped that. Whatever God used, the good result is is that the life was spared. And that really, and I got to say this, when we're talking about sparing a life. It's it is certainly the child, and the, but there's a there's a mom and a dad. You know, with when I get a dad, you know, who comes in, he's really kind of abortion vulnerable or minded. Um, I'll I'll help him to understand very clearly that there's there's three there's three lives at stake here. There's the babies, there's hers, and there's yours. Because you are you are going to be affected beyond this moment. You know, forever. You know, for as long as you're on this earthly plane. And so those are good conversations to help them understand the 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 gravity, the significance uh, of the decision that they're on the cusp of making. And to make sure they understand clearly, we do options counseling here. And that really, that's that's a, a central thing to help a guy, I'll talk, talk sorry, talk to a guy's perspective, is um, that he understands the implications of not only the life in terms of being a father, but also the opportunity if uh, adoption is a, is a consideration, but also to understand too what the implications are with abortion uh, so that nobody can walk out and say, I had no idea. We have people, blessed ladies on our, on our uh, staff who've been through abortion and uh, they have stories that will say they just told me it was tissue and I didn't really you know know any better and I went along with it and I had the abortion and then I learned we, we would never want anybody uh, to have that that to me a, a grievous thing happen to them where they learn the truth later but God is gracious and it is just so true so he he helps and heals in those moments and those so some of those ladies who went through that that terrible thing were able to come back and now minister to others and help prevent them from that 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 life lost that life hurt that they would maybe may not have to carry now yeah we give God the glory absolutely in all things. And so in the last couple of minutes here, uh, could you talk a little bit about the importance of Christians or anyone listening that wants to get involved and volunteer at pro-life pregnancy centers and, and what that looks like? Oh gosh! Um, first off, I will say you are so needed. Uh, there's there's so much potential to do. We're blessed to have four locations here. Some pl- some places have a single, and others have more. But the the need is great, and it's everything from uh, client facing to non client facing things. So uh, and guys, there's uh, there's a ministry to be done. If if it, if you find out that your local pregnancy resource center uh, doesn't have a men's ministry, and many of them do not, so we're very very fortunate. I'm very thankful for um, the founders of this ministry who had the vision to understand that the male part of the equation is really important. And so they pursued that, and praise God they did, because they gave me then an opportunity to first serve as a volunteer and now uh, on staff. Um, but I would say you're absolutely needed, and um, you know the, the, what you can contribute is just so great. The spirit of God, the love of God, speaking through your heart to a client, or you know stuffing envelopes, or any number of other things that can be done. That's just so powerful, and it, and it gets that that important message of life and love from the heart of God out to people when it comes to pregnancy. And so there's just a there's just a if if you go to our our website, it's a, a support hoperising.org is the kind of the, the support site. That's where you'll find out donor opportunities. And if you just want to see what the client sees, it's it's, a, it's a hoperising.org. Just that simple. And uh, you'll see a lot of beautiful things in there to indicate to a person, you know, how can we help you, whether it's a, the, the male or the female. Yeah, so you heard it there. So make sure you guys go out and volunteer for your local pregnancy center. And if they don't have a men's ministry, go out and start one. So Amen. Yeah. Amen. Or yeah. if you're struggling too, if you're not sure what to do, if you're pregnant or if you're a husband or a, a man who has somebody who is pregnant, a woman who's pregnant and you're not sure where to start, then look for pregnancy centers like Hope Rising and get plugged in, go to the website and go and meet and and there'll be people there who will love to support you and share the gospel with you and they're there to help yes absolutely Mm -hmm. indeed and it's just such an important conversation so thanks so much for joining us today I'm honored (laughs) we hope you tune in again next time for more great practical resources for standing on the truth of God's word we pray you do that and please do keep standing on the truth of God's word with zero compromise see you guys later God bless thank you God bless